It's time for Cubs baseball from Coors Field in Denver, Colorado, where the Cubs have assumed the wild card lead in the National League and today have a chance for some history. They look for their first ever sweep of the Rockies in their new home play pen. It's the Cubs and Colorado, the wrap up of the three game series coming up next here on WGN Sports. Hi again, everybody, with Steve Stone, Chip Carey. Two very different ball games the first two times out, Stoney. A very well pitched, well played game in game one. Yesterday, however, an offensive extravaganza as we've come to expect here at Coors. Yet early in the game, the first game, the Cubs scored everything and then both offenses shut down. The second game, nobody scored for a while and then both offenses, but especially the Cubs, really picked up. That's what's happened so far. The Cubs have won them both. And they're trying to do something they've never done here. They're looking for a sweep. And today, Mark Pryor will go to the mound for the Cubs. Jason Jennings, his opponent. And Steve, both these young right-handers have thrown the ball in their careers very well here at Coors Field. Mark Pryor is 2-0 here lifetime. And although he's not throwing the ball as well as he can lately, this might just be the ballpark to turn him around. And he needs a pretty big effort. The Cubs have gone to the bullpen frequently in the series. And the Cubs right now starting to put everything together. There's Jennings and he's a guy two years ago that was rookie of the year when he won 16 games lately he's fallen on some hard times but in this ballpark because of his sinker he's been very effective. He's 12 games over 500 in his young career here at Coors Field that is a very impressive statement. Hopefully the Cubs can sweep him and the Rockies and head to San Francisco with a four game win streak. Stay tuned friends starting lineup some more it's the Cubs and the Rockies from Coors Field in Denver. All that more comes your way right after this. Chicago Cubs baseball brought to you by Bud Light fresh smooth real it's all here Dodge you can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horns Dodge 4,000 car quest auto parts stores all across North America the Illinois lottery have a ball with the Illinois lottery during their 30th anniversary celebration by Pepsi it's the cola and by Southwest Airlines, over 2,800 daily nonstops to 60 destinations all across the country. Chicago kids and parents, Kids WB is coming to WGN after school this fall, and we're kicking it off with a back-to-school Kids WB fan. Come to the WGN TV studios Friday, August 13th. Come and meet Lucha Lucha's Ricochet and Buena Girl, Scooby Doo and Michigan J Frog. Come and win tickets to the early bird raffle. Come and get safety tips, health screenings, free dental exams, and much more. The Back to School Kids WB Fair. Be there or see it here on WGN Morning News Friday, August 13th. Another walk by Tree 11 who forces Skipper to make a decision here. Hey, you've reached the bullpen. Either Dave, your lefty, or Bill, your closer are in right now, but you leave a message after the beep. We'll call you right back. Nice day for a ball game, eh, ladies? Fresh, smooth, real Bud Light. Yeah, I'm left handed. It's all here. Hey, Cubs fans, keep your eye on the ball. Belted deep to Ring and drive. The Cubs are on the board. Every time a Cubs player hits a homer at Wrigley, you could be a winner. It's the Southwest Airlines How Far Did It Fly Home Run Contest. After every Cubs homer, write down the distance along with your name and address and send it to WGN TV. Ten winners will receive two round trip tickets to any Southwest Airlines destination. For every Cubs homer, ask yourself, how far did it fly? From Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the Chicago Cubs. Well, look at that very cute Cub fan in Denver, Colorado this afternoon as we prepare for the final game of this three game series. The Cubs trying to sweep the Colorado Rockies for the first time in this town in 10 years. But Steve, for the first time ever here at Coors Field. And today it's a matchup of former rookie of the year Jason Jennings for Colorado. Mark Pryor to the mound for the Cubs. And the lineup for Dusty Baker seems to be solidifying, especially with Patterson, Garcia, Para, Alou, and Sosa. One through four. And there is the aforementioned Cub lineup. Pepsi, it's the cola, has Corey Patterson and Omar Garcia Parra batting one, two again. Patterson has been a real ace at getting on base since moving into the leadoff spot. Moises Alou hits third. Sammy Sosa, a towering home run here last night, the cleanup man. With the Ramos Ramirez, Derek Lee, Todd Walker, Paul Baco starting the day after a long night game, and Mark Pryor hitting ninth. 
Take a look at the Rocky defense of Holiday, Burnitz, and Walker left to right with Castilla, Clayton, Miles, and Helton in the infield. Todd Green behind the plate. And by the way, you can run on Green all day. And Jason Jennings on the hill looking for number 11. And he misses outside with a ball to Corey Patterson. Patterson with 11 bunt and 12 infield hits for the Cubs so far this season. Big swing and a miss. Evens up the count. What he's learned to do and do especially well is drag the bunt. And if you can get it by the pitcher and make the first baseman field it, then you can beat anybody to the bag. Down the left field line, long run for Holiday. In the corner, he cannot get there. It's a foul ball. One ball, two strikes. Patterson back to the plate. Holiday's a good but not great left fielder. In fact, earlier this year, he was taken out of some games late for defense. Clint Hurdle, trying to build up a lot of confidence in the young man, said, we're going to stay with you all the way. He's got some power. He's a big right-handed bat, and they believe that he's part of the future. In fact, they've got a four-man rotating system in the outfield, and they love to get Holiday four starts a week. So there you look at one of the good managers around, Clint Hurdle, and the umpires for today's tilt. A ball and two strikes for Patterson. The odd man out today is Preston Wilson for this Colorado team, but that might change. There's still some talk that Larry Walker might accept a waiver trade somewhere sometime this month. We'll see if that plays out as Patterson hits it on the ground toward Miles at second. He'll field cleanly, and we're underway. Patterson rolls out to second for out number one. There are very few contending teams in baseball that wouldn't love to have Larry Walker because when healthy, there's nothing he can't do. And Larry Walker holds his fate in his own hands. He's vetoed a couple of deals to this point. They haven't satisfied whatever the criteria was. But everybody knows a couple things about Larry Walker. He can really hit, and he's an asset to your team. No more Garcia Parra. Has knocked in a couple of runs in the series and sports a 12 game hit streak which carries over from the American League. Also playing in his sixth game this year in this park. I'd say. I'd say he likes it pretty well. Well he told me he really liked the hitting background here and like most guys he's thriving at Coors Field. Jennings misses inside. Two no mark Garcia Parra two balls and a strike just underway. I haven't found one hitter yet who says, boy, I really dislike hitting in Coors. Hard hit ball towards short. Deep in the hole, Clayton. Long throw, and he gets him by a full step. Good play, two outs. And Jennings, you're seeing why he's successful here. Two hitters up, two ground ball outs. Well, the big young man is 26 years old, and he has a great sinker. Last year at times, he lost it. They've got a much better inner defense this year. Castilla and Clayton on the left side, along with Miles and Helton, Provide them with a very good inner defense. Dan O'Dowd went and brought in Castilla and Clayton simply to shore up the defense. What they're getting offensively from Castilla is just otherworldly. Two for nine is Moises in the series, and he couldn't check his swing. He drops the bat in disappointment. Doug Eddings with the call at first. Well, Moises couldn't believe it. Doug Eddings said he went around. We'll take another look at it. And Moises looks at Eddings. With a look of incredulity. He couldn't believe it either. No balls and a strike. Flair into center field. Burnett's coming on, and he's got it. And that'll retire the side. Three up, three down to the top of the first. Mark Pryor to the mound in Colorado. Want more? Get more at the Dodge Summer Sales Drive. Get $1,000 bonus cash, plus cash allowances of up to $3,500 on Caravan, the world's best-selling minivan. Ram 1500 with more horsepower than Ford F-150 and Chevy Silverado 1500. And Durango, roomier and more powerful than Explorer and Trailblazer. Want more? Get more. Now grab the best selection of the Dodge vehicles you want. Get to the summer sales drive only at your Dodge dealer. Let's go. Yeah! When things get hot, Sierra Mist. Taste one shockingly refreshing lemon lime. What are you doing? Rookie. <laughs> to leave 
civilization to find adventure. The 245 horsepower all-wheel drive Nissan Murano. Mark Pryor to the mound, and here's the Colorado Rockies starting lineup for their skipper, Clint Hurdle, who was ejected last night in game two. Aaron Miles leads off. Royce Clayton at shortstop hits second. Todd Helton at first base is homered in three straight games. Vinny Castilla hits cleanup. Larry Walker's in right. Holiday in left. Burnett's in center. Green behind the plate gives Charles Johnson a day off. And Jennings will pitch in bat night. Let's take a look at the Cubs. Pepsi defense with Alou Patterson and Sosa left to right. Ramirez. Garcia Parra, Walker, and Lee in the infield. You're looking at Paul Baco behind the plate and Mark Fryer on the hill. So Fryer, who's one of the few guys who has had success in this ballpark, and granted, it's only been a couple of games, but he wants to right the ship today and complete the sweep. And he misses low to Miles, who, after being sent to Triple A, has come back since the 1st of June with 80 hits. Fryer paints the corner. That evens up the count. Pretty right. impressive run for Aaron Miles. Well, he's a switch hitter who's much better from the left side. He does have a little speed. And what he has given them is a guy who usually does not strike out at the top. In this ballpark, if you make contact, many good things will happen because it is lightning fast in the infield. And we know about the thin air as we show you the panoramic view. At Coors Field. One and two to Miles. He was hit yesterday and nearly was so this afternoon. That dance down and in, two balls, two strikes. He's only fanned 33 times in 337 at bats, and this one just misses the belt buckle. Off the plate, full count, three balls, two strikes. As we saw with Kerry Wood in the opening game of this series, it takes visiting players a little longer to find that breaking pitch. But when Kerry found it Friday, it was electric. Bounced up the middle. And a nice play behind the back by Walker. He'll flip to Nomar, who thought about attempting the throw to first. It'll be an infield hit for Aaron Miles, his 81st since June 1, second only to Ichiro in baseball. Well, last year, these guys were the Boston double play combination, and apparently they have worked together before, as you see here. Walker knows he can't get the throw off. He thinks Garcia Parra can. But Nomar wisely, knowing that Miles has good speed, especially from the left side, he's not going to risk a throw. It goes as a base hit. Not a great way to start, but good coordination between Walker and Garcia Parra. Let's see if Clayton's bunting. He's sacrificed 20 times this year. Takes a strike. And it was Kerry Wood Tuesday night, not Friday. Got my days confused. Friday's tomorrow, I think. Well, that feels happen. like a weekend. That can happen at times. And Kerry Wood, after the first inning, was close to unhittable. I think his best breaking ball came to him about the third, and after that, it was lights out for a pretty potent hitting lineup in this ballpark. No balls and a strike to Clayton, who was bunting. Let's see if he is again. It's popped foul for strike two. Well, Clayton, unlike Miles, is a guy you can strike out. If you don't strike him out, he's grounded into 11 double plays, including one last night. Last year, the Cubs had his number. He had three hits and over 40 at bats, and he doesn't hit sliders away very well. Big hole right side, and that one under his chin. Fans here in Colorado want prior to get a warning. Remember, Doman got thrown out after no warnings were issued after a home run and he didn't hit a Ramos Ramirez pitched him inside that was a real surprising turn of events well, that wasn't all that far in but at 94 you don't have a lot chance to decide and that one was in again for the second time it almost took the dread off the locks what it was up and in oh You talking about breakfast or hairdos? I'm not sure. Breakfast was very good. No, I'm by sure. The way. And there's that outside breaking ball you were talking about. Clayton down on strikes, one away. Here's the crazy sequence that took place last night. We and the Rockies were surprised that Doman was thrown out. 
Well, Sammy got hit for the first time this year, and Sammy looks out, but I don't think they were thrown at him. That one inside, and Dan Ayasagna decides to give the boot to their young right-hander, and as you can see, Clint Hurdle doubling his Mr. Tomato face got the boot. He was very excited about that one, and you can understand that because the ball didn't hit him, but in the interpretation of Ayasagna, he thought it was intentional, and because it's a judgment call, if you think it's intentional, you have the right to throw the man out of the game. One strike to Todd Helton. Let's see if the Cubs can keep this man in the ballpark. He's homered twice in the series. In fact, of his four hits against Cub pitching this year, three of them have been round trippers. Well, the two hits in the series have been a home run to left and a home run to right. When they've pitched him upstairs, he's popped it up. Not quite that far upstairs, but upstairs nonetheless. Two balls and a strike to Todd Helton. The Phillies helped out the Cubs in the wild card race yesterday. Cubs now a game ahead of San Diego for the fourth playoff spot in the National League. Cardinals came back and beat Montreal in the ninth. So the divisional race still the same. The Cubs. Let's take a look at the wild card numbers and the teams two three and four San Diego San Francisco Philadelphia weren't all that active at the trade deadline. The Cubs as we know brought in Nomar Garcia Pera by far the most defining move of all the contenders and the Cubs now lead in the category that puts you in the playoffs one of the final eight grounded foul and the Cubs will have their destiny firmly within their grasp this month. After San Francisco, we face San Diego and L.A., then a visit to Milwaukee, and then we start our final six with Houston. Then we move the calendar a little closer towards September. So this is going to be a pivotal month for Dusty Baker and the Cubs. They're going head-to-head -head with the teams closest to them as far as the playoffs and the wild card are concerned. Well, there's no doubt that the Cubs want to repeat as division champions. Last year, San Francisco, Atlanta, and later the Cubs all had home field advantage. Didn't work out very well. Two and two. And Helton down. Wow, look at that pitch from Pryor. Nasty. And Helton is out number two. When Pryor's breaking ball is where he wants it to be, it spins so quickly and rotates straight down that even left hand hitters can't pick up the spin. They think it's a fastball till the last instant, and the bottom falls out of it. That was a great breaking pitch. And he's fanned two in a row. The last pitch, the best he's thrown today. Be nice to not have to find yourself in a fastball pitching situation to this guy. If you can avoid it. That one too low. Baco snares it. One ball, no strikes. And he's driven in 89. And only Scott Rowland has driven in more. That's a career against Pryor. And he likes the ball middle in. He likes any fastball that's under 140 miles an hour. The thing is, nobody can throw it at that speed. He's known as one of the great fastball hitters in our game, even at the ripe old age of 36. He can still turn it around. He's one RBI away from his seventh 90 plus RBI season in his major league career. 2 0 count. Threw it past him. 2 1 now. We're in the first, no score in Denver. We're off to San Francisco. Game one tomorrow night. Nice story in baseball today. All time great guy Andres Galarraga is playing professional baseball again after a couple of bouts with cancer. And he's just a wonderful man, and we hope we see him back in the major leagues. He's got some home run milestones still to go. And I just, for one, love to see him back. He's knocking at the door of 400. It's a pretty exclusive club. Galarraga, under the tutelage of Don Baylor, rediscovered his stroke in St. Louis, followed Baylor here when he was the manager of the Rockies in the early days of their franchise. And the Blake Street Bombers were a fearsome offensive force. That is a fair ball. Paul was hugging the line, and Paul Baco takes care of Vinny Castilla. Close call. Baco got it with a seam still touching the chalk, and no score after one.
flip virus. Your office is oh. now infected. They'll soon trace it back to you. Good luck finding a new job. Want to get away? No, you can. Fly Southwest Airlines from Chicago Midway to cities in the West for just $79. You are now free to move about the country. At CarQuest, our people go above and beyond the call of duty to help the technician working on your car by supplying them with superior service and only quality auto parts. Get the latest original equipment technology with Autolite Platinum and Double Platinum Spark Plugs. Dependable and durable Autolite Platinum Plugs for one perfect spark every time. With nearly 4,000 stores and over 130,000 CarQuest parts to choose from, we'll be there when you need us. CarQuest, the professional choice. This portion of Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN is brought to you by the 4,000 CarQuest auto parts stores across North America. You'll find it at CarQuest. And by Honda. See your Honda dealer to learn more about the great value Honda has to offer. Hey, Mr. Opportunity here. Listen up, folks. Now that is a beautiful Accord LX, and Honda is having a clearance. We're talking serious deals here, people. Honda plus clearance? Come on, you do the math. Seems like a no-brainer to me, but <laughs> I'm just two-dimensional. The 2004 Honda clearance. Hey, you snooze, you're going to lose. Now you can lease an Accord LX for $199 a month for 36 months. And where else? Say it with me, your Honda dealer. I'm Mr. Opportunity, and I'm knocking. Sammy Sosa leads off our second inning against Jason Jennings. Sosa tied Mr. October. Reggie Jackson with a mammoth three-run homer in the seventh inning last night. That brought the Cubs back from a 4-1 deficit. A game the Cubs won 11-8. Monkey's particularly proud of Jennings because he's their number one draft choice, 16th overall in June 1999. That one dances in, and it's a two ball, one strike count to Sammy Sosa. That was the slider, and one of the reasons he was able to win 16 games as a rookie is he would throw sliders and changeups in fastball counts. That one sinks over the outside corner at two and two. The Rockies need more guys like Jennings, guys that can keep the ball on the ground. He's 12 games over 500 lifetime in Coors Field. The one year that Kevin Brown led the National League in ERA, he had a four and a half to one ground ball to fly ball ratio. He would have been perfect for here or Wrigley Field. He was pitching in Florida. He was perfect for there. Sammy takes ball four high. Good start to the second inning. It'll bring up hot hitting Aramis Ramirez. Jennings will walk a man or two. He's walked 72. He struck out 83 this year. And that's the first of many hopefully for the Cubs batters today. Here's Ramirez, three for eight, including a towering home run off Sean Chacon, a man that Aramis ought to send a limo to get him to the ballpark. He just murders the Colorado closer. This one put the Cubs on top. Didn't go out by a lot, but it went out by enough. Since coming off the disabled list, Ramirez is just hitting better and better. Ground ball hit toward Clayton at short. Second base for one, and the turn very easily made for a double play. There's no doubt that Ramirez is still not running 100%, but he's not going to be able to beat that one anyway. Sammy couldn't get close enough to Miles on the pivot. And Ramirez is grounded into a double play. So two outs very quickly in the second for first baseman Derek Lee, who's had a very productive series. He's four for eight so far in Denver. Down and away to Derek for ball two. Two and zero oh is the count. 
Montreal's in St. Louis later on tonight. Cubs are hoping the Expos can take two or three, and that ball hammered left center field. How far is that one going to go? Man, did that get out of here in a hurry. 22 home runs for Lee, and the Cubs lead by a run. Fifth Cub home run of this series. With the Cubs, that's home run number 150. They lead the National League. Jennings gets a sinker up in this ballpark, like in most. They go a long way. Belt high sinkers, just not going to get the job done. And that's long gone. Here's Todd Walker. He's had a fine series. A home run, three RBIs last night. Well, that low camera shot we had of Derek Lee. I love Dusty Baker's reaction in the dugout when Lee made contact. He turned and admired it as it sailed way out in left center. Well, it's very probable that the Cubs will have four guys with in excess of 30 home runs. Sosa, Alu, Ramirez, and Lee. Right in the middle of the lineup. And guys that play every day. So 22 home runs for Derek. And the Cubs have a lead for Pryor. That's off the plate. And Todd Walker takes ball four. Walker, like his surname, does so here in the second. And when he's not walking, He's hitting successfully here at Coors Field. That's the subject of our Hotels.com on the road feature. Like most guys in this ballpark, including just about all the Rockies, very much of a skewed home and away hitting record. This Rocky team at home, very hard to get out, yet get them on the road historically, and this year no exception. They're a completely different team. They're 65 points weaker on the road as far as the batting average is concerned. And they surrender, or I should say score, over two runs a game less away from Denver. Not coincidentally, they're a game under 500 or around 500 at home and 11 under on the road. Ground ball, foul passed first. It really is going to be a challenge forever here in Colorado. Putting together a team that can win consistently everywhere. Something they haven't been able to do, although they did make the playoffs in their third year of existence. With Bob Gebhardt as a GM and Don Baylor as a manager. Now, granted, it was as a wild card and they get knocked out relatively early in that one. That was the first year Larry Walker was here. I think it was 1995. Two balls and a strike. Paco smacks that to center field. Pernitz will make the play. And that'll retire the side. Derek Lee, a tape measure shot in our second inning, puts the Cubs in front. One nothing. Here's how the blue collar guys define the word juicy. Do you see these naked pictures of Pamela Anderson? Here's how the critics define blue collar TV. It's laugh out loud comedy. What's the number for 911? The new comedy blue collar TV. Tonight at 7 on WGN, Chicago's WB. Seven people become roommates, then rivals. Can they handle the pressure? I'm just playing. Studio 7. Tonight at 8 on WGN. Perfect. Here, bases and cameras are always loaded. RBI stands for really big ice cream. And the home team's record is spotless, as are their uniforms. Of course, life isn't always perfect, so there's Walgreens. Open every day, many 24 hours, with everything needed to have a little fun. That's life. This 
is Walgreens. the difference maker in the game to this point. Derek Lee's home run. Now Larry Walker leads off the second for Colorado. Quick address announcer. Uses Larry's name very well. A distinctive call. And he's been here a long time. And the question is for Larry Walker. How much longer does he want to remain here? You want to buy a house? He's got a nice one. He has a couple of nice ones actually but he's put one of them on the market here in Denver. That was in the newspapers today. I don't know if that means he would be more accommodating as far as a trade would be concerned. And to the Rockies' credit, they've said to Larry Walker, look, we'd love to keep you, but we have so many other holes to fill and the financial constraints that this franchise has. It would be, I think, in the Rockies' best interest to move him elsewhere. But Walker has the right, richly deserved, to turned down any potential trade he's done that a couple of times already well he's already once restructured his contract so that the Rockies had more flexibility and it's up to him I mean he's been a very successful player for a long time as far as putting his house up I think he didn't like the lawn ornaments <laughs> one ball two strikes well hey it's quite possible but uh <laughs> There's no questioning when healthy this guy is a great player. Cue ball shot left side Ramirez better hurry Walker can still run and he beats it out. Well Larry Walker had a terrible groin injury and that put him on the shelf early. It didn't seem to want to heal and he is and has been one of the great base runners in the game. He still has enough speed when he can smell a base hit. Ramirez was back and there's no place else to play him. And he just misses him at first. It goes as a base hit, and Walker can sense that he's got a chance to beat this out. So, although he's not running like he did, he's running well enough to get the second base hit of the game. Here's Holiday, young left fielder with 10 home runs, 41 driven in. I told a great story about this guy and Jeremy Burnett's in last night's game. Fans around the country may not be familiar with the link between Holiday and Burnett's. Holiday's dad was a longtime coach of the Oklahoma State baseball team, and Jeremy Burnett's was on that team. And to earn some extra money, obviously, as most college students will do, he decided that he wanted to babysit for the coach, which isn't a bad idea, especially if you're looking for playing time. And so the young man he babysit was. The gigantic young fellow in the batter's box, Mad Holiday. No balls, two strikes. Well, that's why that that I'm sure that he's paying for all of his meals and. Oh, no question. Yes. I'm just wiping his chin after them. Ah, once a sitter, always a sitter. One ball, two strikes. Line drive left field. That is the second straight hit of this inning. And Holiday is two out of five in the series, and indeed Burnitz is the man coming up. When the Cubs came to town, Burnitz was red hot. And so was Holiday. Holiday swung the bat well, but that was a hanging breaking ball, and he drove it in the left. The Cubs have held down Burnitz perfectly in the series. And this is a guy with the power numbers of 28 and 81, giving the Rockies more than they ever dreamed they would get from it. But he too another guy with whom they'll have to make a decision at season's end. Well, there's a mutual option at around three million which for these numbers is a bargain. That's inside Paco held it there for Charlie Relaford but it's ball one to Burnett's who is so far. 0 for seven in the series. He did ground in a double play last night although because it's a lot of fly balls and strikes out a lot. He's only grounded into two of them this year. Beautiful pitch outside corner one ball one strike the third would be welcome and help get Pryor who's nursing a one run lead 
two thirds of the way out of this inning. Off his thumbs and out of play. Real good pitch. Cloudy skies here in Denver today. Chance of some scattered showers later in the afternoon. But whether it's bright sunshine, an evening game, or a day like this, this is still a magnificent facility. Beautiful town. And always entertaining when the Cubs and Rockies hook up. As this place, Wrigley Field West, for this three game series. Two balls, two strikes. Well, we're going to turn off our WGN radar gun because they've got prior 86, 87, 88. He's actually throwing about 93, 94. Down goes Burnett's. Third strikeout for Pryor, one away for the catcher for Colorado. Mark Pryor takes a little something off and he's got Burnett's well out in front of it. So Jeremy, no stranger to the strikeout, fans for the 82nd time. And it'll bring up Todd Green. Charles Johnson is their number one catcher. Green was a terrific prospect originally for the Angels and then he got hurt. He's back in the big leagues now. And a strike to Green. Eight homers 29 driven in. Mentioned Charles Johnson's name. He too was approached about accepting a trade to the Dodgers. He turned that down. He is still a Rocky. And getting the afternoon off at least to this point. Popped up out of play 0 and 2 to Green with Jennings waiting on deck. Don't think Jennings is a cupcake. He's a real good hitter. Jennings is one of the better hitting pitchers in the league. Green last year at Texas hit 229. Showed a little power, but a lot of guys do in that ballpark. And like most catchers, if you can get him to hit the ball on the ground, then Mark and the Cubs can get out of the inning without facing Jennings. Two on one out Cubs by a run Pryor has green in a deep hole at 0 and 2 and he takes care of him four strikeouts for Pryor. I'll give up a hit or two then strike out the next two or three guys that's been the pattern to this point. Pryor loads up on a fastball a lot of late movement on this one. And he throws it by him. You've got to work Jennings just like you work any other hitter. And he can hit the ball pretty hard to left center field. Pryor continues. And a hard hit ball up the middle. Diving play Walker. The flip to Nomar in time. And that'll retire the side. And the hard slide by Holiday causes egg. That's the leg that troubled him with the Red Sox. We'll keep an eye on him as we go to break in Denver. Comes lead 1-0 after two. This portion of Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN is brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. Want more? Get more at the Dodge Summer Sales Drive. Get $1,000 bonus cash, plus cash allowances of up to $3,500 on Caravan, the world's best-selling minivan. Ram 1500 with more horsepower than Ford F-150 and Chevy Silverado 1500. And Durango, roomier and more powerful than Explorer and Trailblazer. Want more? Get more. Now grab the best selection of the Dodge vehicles you want. Get to the summer sales drive only at your Dodge dealer. Looking for a hotel that the kids will enjoy too? Send in the experts. When you use Hotels.com, it's like sending in a team of experts to check out everything you need to know about hotels. So log on or call our certified hotel agents 24-7 to help you find the perfect hotel at the perfect price. Like Orlando from just $45.95. Hotels.com. Best prices, best places, guaranteed. Gumbo. Oh, yeah. Here's how y'all go. Head down by the riverside. You'll see a giant bear eating a man. You go bump for the bump, you see old dead stinking fish. Gonna be a dog there. Be 
foaming at the mouth. There you all are. Sometimes the road to adventure is paved. The 245 horsepower all-wheel drive Nissan Murano. Forgot to warn about that hot sauce. If a Cubs player hits a homer today, write down the distance and player's name and send it to WGN-TV. You could win two round-trip tickets to any Southwest Airlines destination. Nomar was able to walk off under his own power, Steve. He's got the helmet on. He'll hit third in the third with the Cubs up by a run. Looks like he might have gotten spiked as he makes the force out. And we'll watch it again. Got him in the shin. Cubs are hoping that he's okay. He appears to be. Dave Gretzner going out there to find out. Great play by Todd Walker. To keep them scoreless. So Mark Pryor will lead off the third. Corey Patterson and Nomar to follow. A Derek Lee home run. The only scoring so far in today's series wrap up. Cubs have never swept the Rockies at Coors Field. They did it at Mile High Stadium back in 94. Never saw a major league game at Mile High. What was that like? It was just as lively as this. Maybe even livelier. Line to the mound. Look at Mark. Jennings won't even look at it. Good reaction. Tough break for Pryor. Hit it on the screws. One out. Well, there's there's two hitting pitchers who can both do it. And Jennings, fortunately, with the ball to his glove side, just spears it. Saves a base hit and is just happy that wasn't right in the middle of his body because that was a rocket back at him. Here's Patterson. Corey bounced out, leading off the ball game. There's the bunt, pushed hard toward Helton. He'll have to flip quickly. And did he touch the bag? Yeah, Miles did and almost got hit. It's a base hit if you make Helton move to his right. And as it was, believe me. Nobody did it better than Ryan Sandberg at second in a situation just like this. And they've talked about this. You can tell because Miles quickly goes to the bag. Flies out of the way of Corey Patterson. <clears throat> they just do get him at first. And that's the kind of coordination you have to have. But the key of course is to bunt it more at the second baseman. And then he doesn't know exactly quite what to do. Omar hits with two men out. He bounced out to Clayton who made a good play retiring him in our first inning of play. Boy Patterson has really taken to the responsibilities of being a leadoff hitter the last four games. Back to the mound Jennings two fine plays has a perfect third one nothing Cubs last half here at Coors. Very nice. Like all light beers, it's low in carbs. Unlike any other light beer, it's got the great taste of Bud Light. What we have here is a failure to compromise. Fresh, smooth, real. It's all here. You know what I want? My checking account to be really and truly free. Really 100% free. Free, free. I want checking that has the goods. Maximum strength checking from Bank One. When I walk out the door, I want to trip over ATM. Make that free ATM. Free. I don't want to go hiking around in these boots looking for a free ATM. Can you do that for me? I just want to be happy. You should just say, I want the maximum. I want the maximum too. Free checking and thousands of ATMs. Yeah, I like that. Maximum strength checking only from Bank One. You sure we can get a couple more years out of these machines? Because we really can't afford new ones. Relax. With my little upgrades, nobody will even know the difference. Oh, I love this one. This is spreadsheets. We're processing graphs, and this one's, um... I'm not sure what this one's for. There's a smarter way to make your office more productive. Man, I wish I was getting a Dell. Old technology just holds you back. But new customized Dell systems feature Intel Pentium 4 processors with HT technology. So everyone can do more for less. Right now, get great deals on select Dell desktops. Hurry, save up to 20% off and get free shipping. What's this? 
the Chinu laptop. The latest technology, easy as Dell. Dell systems use Intel Pentium 4 processors with HD technology. Top of the order for Colorado. Aaron Miles to work, and he takes a called strike. It's one ball, one strike from Cub starter Mark Pryor. He rolls over the top. Lee will give ground. Hits him in the leather. Pryor got there. An eyelash ahead of Miles, who is sniffing out an infield hit. One up, one down. And Derek Lee said, look, way to hang in there. It dropped out of the glove, but he didn't panic. He stayed with it, and Pryor went over to make the play. Got there an eyelash ahead of Miles. He beat him. Doug Eddings on the call. Watch it again as it drops out of the glove, but... If you take your time knowing the pitcher is going to be there and make a good solid throw, it ends pretty well, despite Dave Collins' safe sign at first. That is a fair ball. Ramirez will argue. That one into the corner. Clayton on his way to second base. That makes that play at first on Miles all that much more important. So Clayton with a double. Ramirez is talking with Dan Iasagna, who was straddling the line, and he says it was fair. We'll slow it down for you. We'll get a better look. He was closer than we were. And if it goes over the bag, the Empire's judgment, it's fair ball no matter where it lands down the line. That's a strike to help Pryor struck him out with a nasty breaking ball, you might recall. Back in the first inning. Minor trade in baseball just announced. The White Sox have acquired Robbie Alomar from Arizona. Alomar came over there with high hopes in spring training. Didn't work out quite for him how he would have liked. But he's going into a postseason race and leaving the Diamondbacks as they start to unload some of their veterans. One ball, one strike. Elton pops it up. Again, the Cubs really jamming him effectively. You know, between innings, as I went back to check the computer, a couple things you might want to know. Yes. One, there are some storms in the area. Yes. So scattered showers at times, severe. And two, my sister's been at the ballpark a couple of days, and the first day they checked cars because there was a fugitive on the loose. They did capture him today, so I want you to feel safe up here. Well, you do look an awful lot like Tommy Lee Jones. And if anybody can find a fugitive, it's you. That's off the plate. By an eyelash. Two balls, two strikes. A couple of early games already in the record books. We'll update the scoreboard in a moment. Anaheim beat Minnesota, so the White Sox with a win later on could. Pull back to within five of the surging Minnesota Twins. Yankees behind Kevin Brown's eight shutout innings lead Oakland 5-0. Texas beat Detroit at Comerica Park 2-1. And Cleveland winning in Toronto 6-3. The Tribe trying to get a game over. Elton's aboard on a one-out walk. Two are on. Castilla the hitter. Mark Pryor was very careful with Helton thinking that if he can just get a ground ball, there is very few guys that will hit into a double play more often than Vinny Castilla. He's grounded into 18 of them this year. And the first time he tapped out as Paul Bacco made a good play, he jumped on a ball that looked like it was rolling foul, and he retired him easily. You don't do that too often in this ballpark. So two on one out for Colorado they trail by a run we're in the bottom of our third inning Pryor sets and fires and just missed he wants to know where Relaford strike zone is today one and oh the count Mets are killing Milwaukee again it's ten to three in the fourth inning up at Miller Park Victor Zambrano debuting for the Mets today tough to lose with ten ball two two and oh to Castilla. Jim Duquette's addition of a couple of pitchers at the trade deadline has done wonders for the offense. 
Well, and as today, the Mets eight back in the East. And seven and a half games behind the Cubs in the wild card. They acquired Victor Zambrano or Scott Kazmir, who was the prize prospect in the Mets pitching hierarchy. And they got Chris Benson from Pittsburgh. Two balls, no strikes. And Pryor wants a new baseball. Larry Walker waiting next. Even with Walker next, I've seen most managers give Vinny Castilla the 3 0 green light for the simple reason that the fastball middle in, he'll lose it for you. But the disadvantage is if he does hit the ball on the ground, it'll be two. Dusty knows you have to have tremendous patience in his ballpark. Don't forget, he spent a lot of games here inhabiting the West when he managed with the Giants. At the knees, Castillo thought that was ball four. Three balls and a strike. Well, there are a few Rocky fans, and they're not happy with that call. We'll watch it from that angle where it always looks high enough. And it did have the whole corner. Three and one with two aboard for Colorado. Battle back to fill the count up at three balls, two strikes. Gentle wind blowing straight in in Colorado today. Well, I think one of the things that Paul Bacco went out to say was if the runners are going and you strike them out, it's better to go for the trailer than the lead runner. Let's hope that happens. They're not going. The pitch bounced toward third. Ramirez, great pickup. He will win the race to the third base back. Another rocket speared by the Cub infield. Clayton's forced to third. Walker hits with two out. Ramos Ramirez has gotten better and better. Castillo looks down at him. Can't believe this one didn't wind up in the corner. And Ramirez, knowing he could only get one, gets there an eyelash ahead of Clayton. The fact that they weren't running allowed the force at third. Otherwise, it's a pretty tough play. But Ramirez saved at least one run and a lot of trouble for Pryor. Walker reached on an infield hit his last time up. And Mark misses low and in ball one. I'm not sure if they've worked out the timing on a pickoff play yet, but Garcia Perra looks like he can get between Helton and the bag. One ball, no strikes. Again, he missed inside and tight. Holiday waits next. Bat roller right side. Lee with a backhand. Flips to Pryor in plenty of time. And a great job of pitching by Mark to get out of the third inning. One nothing comes lead it after three. What's here to do in Philly? Oh boy. Well, I guess they want to come over and see the Liberty Bell. You got the Liberty Bell. We have the Liberty Bell. Pretzels. The National Constitution Museum. There's lots of theater. There's excellent restaurants. Well, there's a lot, a lot of culture here. It's like a baby New York. For me, it's the cheesesteak. 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 Now there's another great reason to go to Philly. You can fly there for just $99 on Southwest Airlines. I love Philadelphia. You are now free to move about the country. One night, some lawyers snuck into your home and made you sign a contract dictating that you have to be a mature, sedan-driving adult. The bad news, that really is your signature on the contract. The good news, there's a loophole. No one said it has to be boring. It can be gorgeous. It can be fast. That's the loophole. Tonight on WCIU, time again for Rossi to take on Tony. The division wars heat up as the White Sox wrap up their three-game set at KC. Sox-Royals, tonight at 7 on WCIU. 
Friday. Be prepared for a splash party in the ballpark by the bay. Sammy Sosa, Barry Bonds, the Chicago Cubs, the San Francisco Giants. This is what happens when divisions collide. Friday at 9 on WGN. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Chicago Cubs and may not be reproduced nor retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Chicago Cubs. 11. Whether you're on the road for business or pleasure, don't miss a minute of the action. Take your favorite team on the road and watch live games from your computer. Sign up for MLB.tv at Cubs.com where baseball is always on. This looks like it might be the smallest of the three crowds, but so far they've drawn 88,000 in two games. There's at least close to 40 here, and many of them Cub fans, you could hear them when Moises came to bat. This, don't forget, used to be a big Cub town before the Rockies came into existence. That's downstairs to Moises Alu. We've seen outstanding pitching. Excellent defense by both ball clubs. And fortunately for the Cubs, one long home run from Derek Lee, who's lurking fourth in the fourth. Greg Maddox will be going for number 300 on Saturday in San Francisco. Don't tell anybody. Okay. We'd like to keep it under radar. And forget I said anything. Paul Baco will undoubtedly be catching the effort. But it didn't come from me. Jason Schmidt is the man who will pitch against the Cubs on Saturday. Matt Clement will go for the Cubs tomorrow night. Giants have yet to name a starter. We're talking about putting Dustin Hermanson in the bullpen to close for them. And it'll be on WGN. And we'll have a special edition of the award winning leadoff man. It is an award winning show. Well, is there any doubt? I mean, that's the upcoming broadcast in SBC Park. And although we very rarely do this, it's 9 o'clock. That ball jammed him, and it's popped to the left side. Vinny Castilla will give way to Clayton. And there's one man down. Well, that shows you it's not quite as lively today. Usually those go out of the yard. So do the bunts. One away. This is really a tough place to pitch. And the longer you're here, it kind of wears you down. Unless you have about a two or two and a half to one ground ball to fly ball ratio. I asked Sean Estes, the former Cub, who's won 11 games for these guys this season. Yeah, it's a resurgent year for him. He's had a fine year for them. And I would assume, Steve, it's human nature as a pitcher to think you have to pitch differently here than you do any place else. And it seems that that was the root of the problems for Darrell Kyle, Mike Hampton, and a host of others who have gone on and had much more success away from Coors Field than here. Well, Denny Nagel also came here sure. for a five-year contract. And just hasn't worked out particularly well. That's why, from an economic standpoint, you have to grow your own. That's why they're so excited about Jennings. Hard hit ball on one hop. Clayton, terrific pick and a perfect throw. Man, we are seeing some picking and grinning in this game today. The Cubs still have the lead, and the Rockies have played some great defense. The Cubs have played some great defense, and because of that, it's just a one to nothing game. Sammy hits this ball as hard as you can hit it and Royce Clayton actually brought in for his defense has made only eight errors and a tough place to field by the way just shows you real good hands and he has a stronger arm than it appears because when he gets the ball quickly he just gets it off and kind of lollipops it to first but pretty accurate thrower one strike the count to Ramirez. And no matter what Royce Clayton does in his major league career, he'll long be remembered as the man who followed Ozzie Smith at shortstop in St. Louis. You talk about a tough task. That was. One one count. Pulled foul past Wendell Kim. Look at where Bernitz is playing. Aramis Ramirez in center field. You talk about two acres of grass. Look at the pasture between Holiday and Burnitz in left center field. 
Well, Holiday is playing well into left center. They give him the entire line. That's one of the ways that they try to cut down the spacious alleys. They figure if it's going down the line, it's going to be a double anyway. So left fielders almost entirely play a little more shallow in left, and they play off the line to be able to cut off doubles. That swung on and missed, and that'll retire the side. Seven up, seven down for Jennings. He trails by a run heading to the bottom of the fourth. Today will be my lucky day. Woo! 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 Look for specially marked 30th anniversary tickets with over $100 million in available prizes. The Illinois Lottery. Have a ball. Woo! Say it with me. Turn your closet into a customized storage center with help from Menards. Our free computerized design -ed center lets you create the storage system that fits your exact needs. Right now, all tight mesh and free slide shelving by Rubbermaid is on sale. Or how about this ready-to-install kit that fits closets up to 60 inches wide? On sale for just $9.99 after $5 rebate. Save big on storage at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Okay, here are the facts. You're looking at Mr. Opportunity. I'm looking at a beautiful Civic. And lucky break for you, Honda is having a clearance. Now listen, there's a chance for big savings here, people. So say it with me. Right place, right time, right now. The 2004 Honda clearance. Hey, you wait. You're going to be late. Now you can lease a new Civic Value package for $159 a month for 36 months at where? Your Honda dealer. Good. I'm Mr. Opportunity, and I'm knocking. Matt Holliday takes a strike. Count even to him. Umpires moving this thing along again with rain in the forecast and getaway day upon us. They want to move the proceedings along as quickly as possible. And one and only visit for the Cubs to this ballpark. So obviously you figure it's not going to affect the Rockies with postseason play, but it has a good chance of affecting the Cubs. And the last thing they want to do is come back here on an off day and have to resume hostility. Ball and two strikes to Holiday, who's single to left. His first time up, and that's inside. David Wright, the kid for the Mets, their young third base prospect, has driven in six runs so far today for New York. Oh, the tabloids on the back page. I can see it now. The right stuff. <laughs> After the Mets wrap up that series today. Assuming, of course, they hold on to a seven run lead. I think he went around. He did. Five strikeouts for Pryor. Good start for the bottom of the fourth inning. Jeremy Burnett's the batter before he swings and misses. Let's pause for station identification. You're watching Chicago's official summer baseball station, WGN TV, Chicago. Chip and Stoney from Coors Field in Denver, Colorado, comes trying to sweep away the Rockies and lead. One nothing on a Derek Lee home run in the second. That aspect of the defense that we just talked about here at Coors. Arlene Clatter, a big Cub fan looking on to Chicago, wanted to know just that. Well, that's the reason why most guys play in the gap and why some of them play more shallow and left. That one missed. Well, we hope the executive producer of the WGN Noon News, Jennifer Lyons, is resting comfortably today. Jennifer, a proud mom. Hopefully, Jennifer will be up and about and back with the family very, very soon. So, Jennifer, to you and your entire family, congratulations and get well soon. 
And a get well soon to Bob Rosenberg also. Who we're sure is looking on in his White Sox jersey. But rooting for a big cup win, no doubt today. Three balls, two strikes. Burnett's thought he earned a walk. Take another look at it. It's a fastball that Paul Bacco eases down into the zone. Payoff. Breaking ball takes care of him. Six strikeouts for Pryor. He's gotten Burdett's twice and he's still hitless in the series. Mark Pryor has excellent stuff today. That curveball is certainly coming to him a little later on. The fastball has been exploding. And Jeremy Burnitz was swinging at the invisible ball. I want to send along get well wishes to Marina Taylor, the sister of Wanda Taylor. Marina at Ingalls Hospital. And Linda is in the University of Chicago Hospital. So a tough week for the Taylor family, but Sharon Panazzo and the rest of us wish you all the best today. As Todd Green bats for the second time. Ground ball toward third. Ramirez stabs with a left hand. And a perfect throw. Three up, three down for Mark, who leads by a run after four. This portion of Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you by your local Ford store. They were designed to protect us. They were created to keep us safe from a world surrounded by danger. Now, this summer, get defensive. Ford Freestar with a side curtain airbag that protects all three rows. And now during the one big event, Ford authorized clearance, you can get zero for 60 or $6,000 cash back. Ford Freestar with the government's highest crash test rating. Now playing for a limited time. Got athlete's foot? Think fast. Lamisil AT cures athlete's foot with just one week's use. If you use Tenactin or Lotrimin AF, you'll be treated for four long weeks. But one week with Lamisil AT keeps you athlete's foot free for three months. There's no better way to cure athlete's foot. Hey! Introducing TGI Friday's bigger, better Atkins approved menu, including new chicken La Boca and new Key West grouper, plus sizzling chicken with broccoli. It's all part of the bigger, better Atkins approved menu, only at TGI Friday's. Uh, did I miss anything? Uh-uh. It's not summer without movies. Can you turn that up? Sure. It's not TV without Comcast. Comcast Digital Cable with Stars and HBO. Now just $29.99 per month until 2005. <laughs> Call 1-888-4-BEST-TV. The critics declare it's laugh out loud funny. What's the number for 911? Blue Color TV. Tonight at 7 on WGN. Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN. Your official summer baseball station is brought to you by Bud Light. Fresh, smooth, real. It's all here. Bud Light. Mark Pryor has great stuff. He's protecting a one run lead. The Cubs have just one hit. And Pryor so far has made it hold up. And this and the is the man, man that has the hit. Responsible for the lead. And a ball low and away to Cup first baseman Derek Lee. Jennings has given up 21 home runs in now 135 innings of work. It sounds like a high total, but it really isn't in this ballpark. You're just going to give them up. You have to hope they're solos. In the grand history of the Colorado Rockies, and it hasn't been all that long, there has been one 1 0 game in Denver. One. What was Nomo's no hitter, the game that he pitched because of the wet conditions, entirely from the stretch? Was that a 2 0 game? I will have to go through the book of knowledge and find that. But the one nothing game in Denver. Ritz beat Glavin August 10th 1994. So nearly 10 years to the day. We got a one nothing game here. Down goes Derek Lee on strikes. That's the second of the game for Jennings. 
Well, I can't wait for 70s night. I don't know about you. Well, it's right around the corner. In fact, it's only five days away. And Eric Estrada, the star of the classic television show Chips, will guest conduct the seventh inning stretch, August 10th, 70s night at Wrigley Field, brought to you by Southwest Airlines. You won't have to go deep in your closet for your 70s outfit. You could be a lucky winner and receive airline tickets from our friends at Southwest Airlines. And then between his chips and your chaps, I'm going to have a whale of a night. That's always fun. A couple years ago, you dressed up and looked just like Austin Powers. I thought that was the costume of the century. Well, it was very nice. I, I looked like an, an old, I looked actually like Austin Powers' father after a very tough night. But I do remember that it was incredibly hot. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. Think he remembers the 70s? He was 70 in the 70s. Walker shoots a flare into shallow right center field, and that's in no man's land. That's what has to frustrate pitchers. You know you're going to give up home runs, but there's just not enough bodies to cover all the acreage. A blue pit. Starts the proceedings for Todd Walker. Well, there's a couple of philosophies in which to play defense here. One is you play deep enough so you give up singles. And another is that you cut off loopers and hopefully line drives, but then you're going to give up doubles and triples. So the team that plays here on a daily basis, I'm sure, has figured out that it's better to give up just the little bloopers. And he keeps Walker at first base. The second Cub hit. You asked a question about the Nomo no hitter. It was a nine nothing game here at uh, Coors Field, September 17th, 1996. Well, the oddity was that here's a guy that's so deceptive from the windup, and he couldn't use it because of the wet conditions, and pitched the entire game from the stretch, and still threw a no hitter. You are a former pitcher. Where does that performance rank on, among the pantheon of great performances in baseball history? Considering everything we've spoken about and know about Denver, Colorado. Yeah. I mean, you would think that it's not going to be repeated too often, if ever. Do it. It's an astounding accomplishment. And Nomo has shown, even though he had a whole career in Japan before his career here, that internationally he's one of the great pitchers. Maybe of all time, considering he got here late in his career and still put up some terrific numbers. Ball and a strike to Paul Baco, who lined out to center his first time up. And Jennings misses upstairs, ball two, two and one your count. Dusty broke out the hit and run in an effort to try to stay out of the double play. Baco hit the ball hard last time up in the second. And if you're going to use a running game, this is a good time to do it. You don't expect to pitch out two and one. He's going, looking back, swing and a miss. The green throw right on the money. And that's only the second man he's thrown out trying to steal this year. Green now, two for 24 against would be base stealers. Well, this is one of his best throws by far. Baco, swing and miss on the hit and run. And he just guns down Walker. And the ball gets there in plenty of time, and Walker with a pop up slide. But he didn't pop up anywhere near the bag. So Jennings back to the windup, a 2 2 count. 1 0 Cubs lead, top half of the fifth. And Cubs would love Baco to reach here and at the very least allow Pryor to hit in the fifth. Well, with the exception of the home run by Lee, Pryor's hit the ball the hardest of all the Cubs. There's a hard hit ball to short, but Clayton perfectly positioned. And a low throw is dug out at first. Nothing happening in the top of the fifth. Still a 1 0 game in Denver. You've been waiting all year for this moment to arrive. The one and only clearance at your Lincoln Mercury dealer. A short time when you can get the best savings of the year on every Lincoln and Mercury. 
including Navigator, the Midsize Aviator, and the Versatile Mountaineer. Get $4,500 cash back or 0% APR for 60 months, plus $1,000 for Cadillac owners. See your Lincoln Mercury dealer and be satisfied. Sammy Sosa. Cook my friend Sammy Sosa up with one of those special tacos. Tacos and Pepsi, the perfect double play. <laughs> it's the cola. Attention all taste buds, this is your wake-up call. Introducing Arby's new Market Fresh Chicken Salad. It's a delicious twist on ordinary chicken salad with all white meat chicken, fresh diced apples, grape celery, and toasted pecans. And now you get to choose how you want it served, as a sandwich, in a wrap, or in a bowl. Whichever way you prefer. Arby's new Market Fresh Chicken Salad. One great chicken salad, three ways to enjoy it. back at Coors Field in Denver. So far, so good. Mark Pryor's gotten a one-run advantage, and he's made it stand up to this point. Trying to do something the Cubs have never done in this ballpark, which is sweep the Rockies away here. They've got a one-run lead, a precarious lead in this ballpark. Jennings will lead things off, then the top of the Colorado order. Pryor has six strikeouts. He's scattered four hits. As he's chasing down his third victory of the season. Popped up by the pitcher and out of play. Two even up the count. Jennings hit the ball awfully hard last time up in the second. It would have turned into a run but for the fine play of Todd Walker. And on the play Garcia Pera got spiked somewhat but came away relatively unscathed. That's a called strike. Want to congratulate Frank Maloney. My ticket manager for the Cubs. Frank's daughter Molly and family welcomed a new baby boy Liam Kelly into the world. So to their entire crew, congratulations. And Jennings, a good hitter, leads off the fifth successfully for Colorado. That's their fifth hit. We've talked about Jennings being one of the best hitters in the National League. And along with Mark Pryor, when these guys go head to head, not only do they pitch very well, they both hit well. You can see the skies darkening up somewhat around the ballpark. Let's see how Colorado plays it here in the fifth inning. Miles an infield hit. Also grounded out to first. And a close play. Pryor retired him. They play behind the pitcher and Miles lays down a punt. Mark's got to play at second and he will make it. And another hard takeout slide this time by Jennings. Nomar's okay. One man down. Well I think Nomar feels like he's got a target on him. And he asked Jennings if he's okay. They're both okay. Watch it again. Ball's bunted too hard. You're not going to turn a double play, but you want to cut down the lead runner. And Jennings goes in not only hard, but he goes with the leg whip. Looks a little like the NFL, but he wants to make sure it's not a double play. Nomar comes away again, thinking that this is a fairly tough league over in the National League. A throw to first where Miles stands. You've got to keep an eye on him. He's. 10 out of 13 in the stolen base department. Good play by Pryor as he does cut down the lead runner. One on, one out. One nothing Cub lead. And that's in at the knees. I want to send along greetings to Lori Heisel, big friend of Cub Super Scout Jim Crawford. Lori watching the game down in Peoria today. This one's been a terrifically pitched and defended game. Nothing in two. Well, through the first four and a third innings, Mark Pryor has had the stuff that we saw the second half of last year. 
what makes him so deceptive is the fastball just seems to explode at the last instant there's late movement on everything and his breaking ball has been very sharp today call third strike outside corner Clayton in disbelief is number seven for prior today and there are two outs with Helton coming up when you're around the plate consistently you're going to get the benefit of all of these calls this is a good pitch Paul Baco sets up he's straddling the outside corner and he pretty much just lays it in his glove so Pryor has the good control Clayton can't believe it as he saunters back to the dugout. That's a little low did he swing apparently not. That's the same pitch he struck him out on in the first inning. Only the difference is there wasn't two strikes this time and Helton was able to lay off. Helton walked in the third inning for Colorado. One ball no strikes back to the screen. By the way with one more out this does become an official game. And the Cubs do have the lead. A ball and a strike. Way upstairs. Want to send along greetings to. David Longoria, the nephew of Veronica Lopez, fine executive assistant to John McDonough. David going through some surgery today at the Brooks Army Medical Center in San Antonio, Texas. And uh, David, we're all thinking about you and your entire family today. Get well soon. Way upstairs, ball three to Helton with a right hand hitting. Vinny Castilla due up next. Well, this is where Mark wants to just take an extra look at Miles. If he is running you don't want him to get an extra step because it's easy to score in a double if he does. Runner is going the pitch is a strike the throw to second on target and in time they got it. Nomar reached back and was able to take care of Miles and that takes care of Colorado in the fifth inning. The theme of the day defense and it's been excellent for both teams and the Cubs lead by a run. Southwest Airlines from Chicago Midway to cities in the West for just $79. You are now free to move about the country. In perfect, a day at the beach is truly a day at the beach. When you get thirsty, cold water is always at hand. And there's never a cloud in the sky unless you need one. Of course, life isn't always perfect. So there's Walgreens, open every day, many 24 hours, with everything needed to take it easy. That's life. This is Walgreens. Hyundai's winning streak summer clearance is now held over. Time is running out to save on the popular Hyundai Elantra. The Elantra costs $1,600 less than a Honda Civic LX when comparably equipped. And right now you get $1,500 cash back or 0% APR on every Elantra. Plus, Hyundai's award-winning quality is backed by America's best warranty. 10 years, 100,000 miles. So don't walk. Run to Hyundai's winning streak summer clearance. Get a 2004 Hyundai Elantra with $1,500 cash back or 0% APR. This portion of Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN is brought to you by Hyundai. When your car comes home with America's best warranty, you win. Hyundai. Walgreens Pharmacy of the Chicago Cubs. And by Acura. Experience the performance today at your local Acura dealer. Let's take a look at our upcoming high definition schedule for the Cubs and White Sox. The Indians are in town Sunday. Then we'll welcome the Padres and Dodgers next week, August 12th and 15th at 1 o'clock. Reminder for you, Cubs and White Sox baseball in high definition for our Chicago area audience only. And it's courtesy of our friends at Grant's Appliances, Electronics, and more. 
Mark Pryor leads off the sixth. He's got a one nothing lead. Well after the line drive hit back to him on a fastball. Jennings has decided to go to the slider a couple of pitches. There has never been a one nothing game at Coors Field. There have been only two two nothing games in the history of Coors Field. Well, both pitchers have good enough stuff where this could fall into that category but still a long way to go. As Monsanto we saw the offense just, explodes late. Monsanto just stepped in the booth. And he was looking out at the fact that the Cubs could sweep this team in this park. Really? Yes he was. Very happy with the offense. I mentioned there was a little defense in pitching today. Both teams playing exceptionally well defensively behind both pitchers. That one evens the count to Patterson. He tried to punt last time up. And a fine play by Helton and Miles converging at the first base bag. Beat Patterson. Obaco made a good throw to cut down Miles to get out of the inning. Now you're going to lead off with Helton next inning. One and two, bases empty for Corey Patterson. And there's a drive belted. Forget about that. It's two or nothing. Fifth hit of the series for Corey, his 12th home run. And a little more breathing room for Mark Pryor and the Cubs. Corey Patterson with his fifth career home run in Denver. And this was a no doubter, Denver or no Denver. This one went a long way. And the Cubs have a two to nothing lead. Nomar Garcia Parra flies that ball to left. Holiday broke back, now comes in and is able to make the grab. Wind picking up now here at Coors Field. So maybe the outfielders may not have to play quite so deep in left field today. Well, you can see the flags blowing straight in. It's very open in left center. There are times when the ball swirls. It does blow in from left, but as it comes in, it swirls out to right center field, and that becomes the wind tunnel. Well, let's see if Moises can hammer one here. He is 0 for 2 today. Patterson solo home run Derek Lee a solo home run the contact to damage ratio awfully high for the Cubs who have three hits against Jennings today and lead by two and that ball hammered toward left holiday will make an awkward run at that ball but come up cleanly and that'll retire the side Two nothing heading to the bottom of the sixth inning in Denver. We make every Budweiser with the highest quality ingredients. We brew every Budweiser to be the freshest beer. We make Budweiser. You make it the king. All right, Mikey, come on, let's get that birdie. There you go. So Jen and I are thinking about getting that new Jaguar. There's something telling you it's time to get a Jaguar. Presenting the Unleash a Jaguar sales event. Lease an XJ8 for $6.99 at your local Jaguar retailer. Unleash one today. See the Jaguar XJR in Catwoman in theaters now. The bigger, better Atkins approved menu. Only at TGI Fridays. Assurance in rain means Goodyear's deeply carved aqua shoots propel water away from your tread. 
Assurance on ice means Goodyear's interlocking treads deliver gripping power. Assurance on dry pavement means Goodyear's reinforced shoulders give you confident maneuvering. The revolutionary new Goodyear Assurance with triple tread technology for assurance in any weather on the wings of Goodyear. Hey Cubs fans, enjoy a drink with your friends before, during, or after the game at the Friendly Confines. Near the corner of Addison and Sheffield, the Friendly Confines offers easy access in and out of the game. Enjoy Cubs ambience inside or order from the grill and relax in the outdoor patio. Todd Helton was up when Aaron Miles was thrown out trying to steal at second base. So he'll get another turn leading off the Colorado sixth. This is going to be a fairly tough inning and if Mark Fryer can get through this one things get a little easier. And it's Helton Castilla and Larry Walker Mark stake to a two nothing lead. The Rockies have Todd Helton for a long time. They have made sure that. He'll be a Rocky for a while. And that's out of play foul to Colorado first baseman who absolutely loves the month of August a career 385 hitter this month. The 2 2. And that's pitch number 90 for Mark Pryor today. Stays alive. We'll do it again. Giants are leading the Reds one zip that game in the fourth. We head to San Francisco after today's play. Barry Bonds is not playing today. Felipe Bailu probably wanting to rest him. He knows the importance of the series against the Cubs. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night. And the Cubs will win their way home and entertain the West in a homestand. That missed up and away, and Helton draws a leadoff walk. That is the second walk for prior in the game. And when we get back, Friday, August 13th, will be Culver's Day at Wrigley Field. Make sure you arrive early. The first 10,000 fans. We'll receive a Cubs cap compliment of Culver's. Mark Pryor has been dominant, but four out of the first six innings, the leadoff batter has reached. The second time that Helton has drawn a walk, the first time he didn't lead off the inning. I think that time he just pitched around him and then retired Castilla and Larry Walker to get out of the third. Then he was robbed by Ramirez, who made a fine diving catch forced Royce Clayton at third base in that Colorado third inning of play. And it certainly would help to know for Ramos Ramirez where Mark Fryer is going to work with Vinny Castilla because he's playing off the line and Castilla normally a dead pull hitter. There is some room between Ramirez and the bag. One strike count popped him up. Let's see if the wind plays tricks with this Ramos Ramirez. And Baco ball goes all the way to the cup catcher. And Castilla pops out and is 0 for 3. A big out and Paul Baco drifted with the ball, made sure where the ball was before he flipped away his mask. And also made sure that the mask wouldn't be anywhere near him. So now as the winds whip up in the ballpark, which usually means that rain is at least in the neighborhood. Mark Fryer will have to deal with another great left hand hitter. Larry Walker an infield hit and a ground ball Derek Lee spears that from his knees throws to second and forces Todd Helton. Man oh man has this been a defensive showcase. Excellent play by Derek Lee. That ball could have easily gotten through the right side but Lee drifting off with the pitch. Able to catch it from his knees making sure that he doesn't hit Helton and you're not going to get two. You have to make sure of one. Great effort by Lee. So now you've got Holiday who singled and has struck out. Rockies.
Rockies homestand will continue. They'll welcome the Reds to town starting tomorrow. We'll trade places with Cincinnati and head to San Francisco. Our only visit to the city by the bay. Out of play foul for a strike to the Colorado left fielder. The Cup bullpen now up and going for the first time today. John Lester. Prior at 97 pitches so far. And that sweeps outside for a ball. One ball, one strike. That's well, hoping to get some help from the Phillies and from the Expos later on. Never too early to inquire for, I'm sure, Dan McLaughlin of the Cardinals what Chris Carpenter has in store with his repertoire for game three of that Cardinal Expo series tonight. John Patterson will oppose St. Louis. Two and one. Ball three, three balls and a strike. Burnett's strikeout victim twice. Waiting next. Well, Holiday does have pretty good power. He's hit 10 home runs. He'd love to work him away in this situation. And Mark just reached back and threw the fastball right by him on the outer third. See where Baca wants it. And Pryor puts it right there. That one at 93 miles an hour. Three balls, two strikes. Rounded up the middle and into center field for a hit. Larry Walker around second. He will cruise into third. The Rockies have him at the corners with two out. Well, Larry Walker does that because he wants to invite a throw, but Corey Batterson wasn't falling into that one. Walker has been and is one of the great base runners in our game. See him taking off at three and two and when he rounds second, he knows the grass in center field's a little slower than most. This one right back up the middle. And you watch Walker. He just says, throw it if you want, but Nomar pointing at second base. That's where you want the throw. That's where it went. Now they're at the corners for Penitz with two outs. Jeremy's not had the best of days or series. He has struck out twice today. He's 0 for 9 against the Cubs here at Coors. You don't figure Holiday to be going. He's successful just half the time, three of six. And quickly, Mark ahead with strike one. Reds have tied the Giants in the fifth inning, 1 1 the score out west. Dodgers over the Pirates, 5 to 2. You don't think your is going to go much beyond this inning and you know in his mind whatever he's got he's going to show to Burnett. Comes leading by two. Good off speed pitch throws him 0 and 2. Mark Pryor changes speeds throws the breaking ball freezes him. And now you have. A choice of a few things. The face high fastball, Bernitz has never been able to catch up to. And today, on any breaking ball down, Pryor is frozen. Off his thumbs, blooped toward third foul. And Bernitz another swing coming out. Well, the papers are flying around the booth as the wind kicks up. Green waits next. Let's look at him in the seventh. The 0 2 pitch to Burnitz. He went upstairs and missed with it. One ball, two strikes. Well, a couple reasons you don't want to run here with Holiday. One, you want to keep the right side open for Burnitz, who normally is a pull hitter. And two, the guy who can hit the ball out of the ballpark, you don't want to leave him standing in the batter's box. Face high fastball. Inning over. Pryor, pinpoint command today. Leads in Colorado. Two to nothing.
Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you by Pepsi. It's the Cola. Let's play for it. Let's go. Things get hot, Sierra Mist. Taste one shockingly refreshing lemon lime. What are you doing? Rookie. <laughs> Yo, Mr. Opportunity here. Now, I know how you family people love to buy volume and save. So, heads up. I'm looking at a nice, roomy Odyssey. And Honda is having a clearance. Volume? Oh, yeah. You get the space, you get the comfort, you get the picture. And savings? Come on, it's what I live for. The 2004 Honda Clearance. Hey, move it or lose it. Now you can lease an Odyssey EX with a DVD rear entertainment system for $2.59 a month for 24 months. I'm Mr. Opportunity, and I'm knocking. What makes someone crave a Wendy's bacon mushroom melt? Is it the quarter pound of beef that served fresh and hot from the grill? Is it the warm cheddar sauce so loaded with succulent mushrooms that your mouth waters? Or is it how it's combined with strips of hickory smoked bacon that makes it irresistible? Well, as long as it's back, who cares? Get a bacon mushroom melt made just for you today. Only at Wendy's. It's better here. And our pickup window's open till 1 a.m. or later. A special Thursday Reba. Ben's car is... Maybe he's okay with it. <laughs> Reba, tonight at 7.30 on WGN, Chicago's WB. Steve, I'll bet you didn't know this, but a season high in pitches for Mark Pryor, and he was magnificent. If indeed he's done six shot out innings in Colorado. Well, normally, one of the catchers don't come up to you and give you a hug if you're still in the game. So, 108, and just about every one of them quality pitches. He's also shut out this team through six in this park. It's a good trick. Off the end of the bat, back to the mound, and Jennings retires Sammy Sosa. One up, one down. Ramos Ramirez is the Cub hitter, and Saturday, August 14th, when the Dodgers are in town at 12:20, arrive early at Wrigley. The first 10,000 kids get an Ramos Ramirez growth chart, compliments of American dairy farmers. Not only is his average growing, but so is the home run and RBI total with every passing game. 23 and 70 are those totals, and a seven-game hit streak on the line in today's play. Did something last time up you don't see a lot of from Ramirez. He's one of the true sluggers that doesn't strike out all that much. He's got a real good chance to end this season well under 100. He's at 49. With about 370 at bats. This is really a great road trip. Chance to see my sister, my nephew Sam, my sister Deborah here in Colorado. And of course, one of our favorite cities, a city that Dusty knows all about. He managed there 10 years, San Francisco, and the wine country up north. Driven down the right field line and out of play by Ramirez, 0 and 2. Ever been up there? Yeah, went last year. Took my wife Susan and uh, our producer Pete Toma, Matt Bolts, Andy Mazur. Skip Ellison, of course, a wine connoisseur as that ball's blooped into left field for a hit. Fourth of the game for the Cubs. A one out single for Ramirez gives him an eight game hit streak. The folks at Mondavi were just wonderfully hospitable. They gave us a, a three hour tour. It really is a, a neat way to spend an off day in San Francisco. It's just a beautiful place. Friends of mine had restaurants up there. I haven't been up there in years. Here's Derek Lee. He's Homer today. Now Tom Seaver's winery is coming along. We saw him. I thought that was really interesting that here's a guy that's a Hall of Famer and all time great. Decided to buy some land, grow some grapes, and bottle his own wine. Hard hit ball. That's through for a hit. Two straight cup singles in the seventh inning. The Cubs would like to add to this 2-0 lead. 
as we've seen any number of times you never can quite get enough and Bob Apodaca now out to talk with Jennings wants to see if he has a whole lot left he's made 22 starts he hasn't finished any of them he's averaged right around six innings per start and we're already in the seventh so although it's been a relative minimum of pitches at just 82 every day differs he doesn't want us to read his lips something we're not fond of either Lester continues to work in the cup bullpen and Todd Walker will hit with two men on and one out in our seventh inning of play. Travis Driscoll loosening up in the bullpen for the Rocky. Line drive left field, three straight hits. And Wendell Kim will wisely hold Ramirez. Bases are loaded with one out. Holiday was shallow. That ball was hit hard. No chance to score Ramirez. So the Cubs load him up. Looking for more. Walker continues his red hot hitting in this ballpark. And now Paul Baco will have an opportunity. Jose Macias in the on deck circle. And Clint Hurdle looking out and wondering just how much Jennings has left. So Baco is lined out and grounded out. Comes at the very least need a fly ball here. Leading by two. Ground ball right side that's through. Four straight hits. Ramirez scores. They'll wave Lee around. The throw is laid and not in time. Big hit for Baco. He drives home numbers five and six and listen to the Cup fans at Coors. Paul Baco takes it through the right side. It's a good sinker. And Larry Walker, who's got a good but no longer a great arm in right field, can't get the job done. Wendell Kim running with Lee. He scores easily around a lunging tag by Green. And the Cubs have a four-run lead. And now Macias will hit for Mark Pryor. First and second are the Cub runners. Four consecutive hits, a 4 nothing lead. And that one chopped foul. A win today for the Cubs would be their fourth straight. It would be their eighth in their last ten games. That, of course, the streak started after the near no-no in Philadelphia. The reason we bring that up, if you look at Atlanta for example after Randy Johnson threw the perfect game against the Braves they took off maybe that'll be the same story for the Cubs over the final two months of the season they enter play today one game up in the National League wild card and while not conceding the Central Division race no the easiest path to the playoffs right now is as the fourth team not division champions one ball one strike. In the dirt, two and one to Macias. Cub bench starting to get healthier as well. Todd Hollinsworth getting closer by the day for the Cubs, and his bat has been missed. And the fans yelling, "Let's go, Cubby!" Ball three, three balls and a strike. Well, there's been many times when it seems like a home game, wherever the Cubs are playing, it usually feels that way here in Denver. A lot of Cub fans come from all around to drive and plan a vacation around this series in Colorado. Slashed down the left field line, but the count will fill up at three and two. And this is a beautiful place. Got to come out here this winter and spend some time in in the mountains. It's just a shame because we're in the wrong division. We only get to see the Rockies once at Coors Field. Well, 
not many pitchers would share your sentiments. Three balls, two strikes. And they're loaded again. Well, again, you wonder how long Clint Hurdle is going to stay with Jennings, who seems to have the wheels come off the card here in the seventh. And Hurdle hasn't abused that bullpen in this series. But like a lot of Rocky managers before him, he spends a great deal of time allowing his pitchers to pitch themselves in and sometimes out of trouble. Driscoll is ready. But so is Patterson, who has torn it up since the Cubs got Garcia Parra. He's 7 for 16 at the plate. And his on base percentage even more impressive than that. And of course, he's found a home in the number one spot. You know that he can hit lefty, so you don't even think of tuning him. It gives the Cubs everyday speed at the top of the order. And now that he's bunting more, and you know he can hit the ball out of the ballpark. He's done that today. That one in the dirt, and he couldn't resist. No balls, two strikes. This, at this point, is a pretty potent lineup for the Cubs. There's not a whole lot of soft spots. And the addition of Nomar has made a big difference to this baseball team. Nothing in two, a cup at every base. Two are in, in the top of the seventh. And Patterson expanded his strike zone and is out number two. Shortstop, no mob. Garcia Parra. Omar told me that he'll never forget the ovation that he received from Cub fans when he first came out of the dugout in what was his first look at Wrigley Field. Pretty good numbers with the bases loaded. Green a good stop, saved a run, and a chat with Jennings forthcoming. The Cubs delighted to have Garcia Parra. He seems to be delighted to be in Chicago. And it's going to be a very interesting two month ride for the Cubs, hopefully toward another playoff performance. With Nomar Garcia Parra and company, the 1 0 count to him. It's hit in the air toward left center field. Wind is going to knock that one down, and Holiday will make the grab. Two runs, four hits, seventh inning stretch time in Denver. Cubs leading four to nothing. You are the tree cone in my pie. You make the ice melt. This moment to arrive. The one and only clearance at your Lincoln Mercury dealer. A short time when you can get the best savings of the year on every Lincoln and Mercury, including Navigator, the midsize aviator, and the versatile Mountaineer. Get $4,500 cash back or 0% APR for 60 months, plus $1,000 for Cadillac owners. See your Lincoln Mercury dealer and be satisfied. Looking for a hotel that the kids will enjoy too? Send in the experts. When you use Hotels.com, it's like sending in a team of experts to check out everything you need to know about hotels. So log on or call our certified hotel agents 24-7 to help you find the perfect hotel at the perfect price. Like Orlando from just $45.95. Hotels.com. Best prices, best places, guaranteed. This is it. Introducing the full-size 5.6 liter V8 Nissan Armada. Where are we? Oh. 
shared the adventure. It's getaway day, and it's time for our Budweiser Game Time Fan Cam. So we're back at Coors. Chip Carey, Steve Stone, Cubs four, Rockies nothing. Mark Pryor, six outstanding innings of work. He'll give way to another impressive right-hander, John Lester. Lester's ERA below two. He's on for the 14th time. One of the big surprises for this team as he takes a 3-0 record into the ball game. And we certainly hope that Tim Buss, the Cubs strength coach, is okay. He was actually warming up Lester before the game and one of the probably a fastball sailed and got him right in the eye. Well we know Lester has great movement on his pitches. Poor Bussy looked a whole lot like he fought Oscar De La Hoya a few rounds and did not win the decision. And there's Mark Sweeney their number one pinch hitter in the on deck circle. Two and two to green. Down he goes on strikes. One up, one down. Sweeney's not going to hit with nobody on. They're going to save him for later in the game, so Charles Johnson will come up. Lester just throws it on by him. And the good work out of the pen continues. Johnson had a tough night of it last night for the Colorados. And he will hit for Jennings, who gives up four runs in seven innings today. Two of those runs allowed on long solo homers. Charles hit the ball very well last night. He just didn't catch it all that well. Which is only truly important if you're a catcher. Last time I checked, he is. Well, the Dodgers did want him. He didn't okay the deal, and he remains here with the Rockies for the moment. You might remember, with the Florida Marlins as a number one draft choice of that organization, this guy out of the University of Miami was one of the great defensive catchers around and his offense came to him. He was always big and strong. The pitchers love to throw to him. He's been around a long time and right now defensively we're seeing some holes in the game. Another year left on his contract as that's hit hard to right on the warning track. Sammy is there. Two men out. Lester throws that fastball pretty much down the middle and Charles knows he missed it. He had a good pitch to hit. But it stays in the yard. Back to the top and miles. Takes a ball miles an infield hit. Was retired by Derek Lee and Mark Pryor in the third. Butted into a force out in the fifth. Granted it hasn't been a particularly entertaining series if you're a Rocky fan but for Cub fans and we are this has been a wildly entertaining series you've had just great. about everything you'd want to have at times you've had a whole lot of offense great defense on the part of both teams but especially the Cubs today and the pitching in a tough place to pitch today has just been overwhelming and Kerry Wood was also overwhelming in his start. A little tapper left side. Ramirez will try to cut it off. Can't. It's an infield hit for Miles. If Ramos doesn't get it, there's no way in the world that Nomar can do anything with it. And Ramirez probably still not quite 100% as he moves to his left. And we'll watch Ramirez. Now, he's given it everything he's got, but you know, he wants to make sure that he stays healthy. He's walking back slowly to third base. When he was gone from this lineup, not to denigrate the offense at all. The Cubs average 2.6 runs a game. That was over two and a half weeks. He means a lot to them. The numbers certainly bear that out, but it's, I think, the number we spoke about regarding Ramirez that is the key there. He's a guy in this lineup with tremendous power, tremendous RBI potential, but a guy who, within the context of the other seven offensive players around him is a man that makes contact very consistently. Well he started to rally in the seventh with one out. 
He got a looping base hit and the Cubs went on to score a couple of runs which put a little distance between themselves and the Rockies. The hits are even at seven. It's been an airless game. But the Cubs behind the long ball and a well-timed rally lead by four. And have two strikes on Clayton with a man at first two out. And Baco knocks that down. Oh, well, Baco's had a nice day behind the plate. A big base hit. He's thrown out a key base runner and he's blocked pitches down. So we normally see Paul Bacco and Greg Maddox goes to the mound but day game after a night game Paul in today and he's had a big day behind the plate. So plenty of things to be excited about at least to this point. Like the French when Lindbergh landed. I'm waiting all year to hear you say that two balls two strikes. Reds lead the Giants Sean Casey with an RBI double it's two to one in the sixth. Had an important game. Again with the wild card situation the Giants are two games behind the Cubs. Two and two the count to Clayton. Line drive looping into left field that'll drop for a hit. And here's Helton with two on and two out. The bullpen up and going the question for Dusty Baker is with Helton's ability to put the Rockies just one back. Question answer you go to the pen. So Colorado with eight hits three of them on the infield get a second two out hit from Royce Clayton in the seventh inning and Dusty Baker will go to the bullpen it's going to be Glendon Rush to face Todd Helton four nothing Cubs back to Coors Field in a moment. So guys. Any words of wisdom? Yeah, run. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Wendy's bacon mushroom melt is back. Well, that's awesome. Oh, with bacon and warm cheddar cheese sauce. Uh, and those mushrooms. Huge help, guys. Thanks. I gotta have one. I'm getting married in five minutes. Come on, how long could it take? The one you love is back. Wendy's delicious bacon mushroom melt. It's better here. See why we had to have one? I do. And our pickup window's open till 1 a.m. or later. That's a silverback. You can see the silver right on the back. Oh, great. He's making a call. He's making a peak hour call! Just hope you're not roaming. <laughs> Too many restrictions on your wireless plan? You want some of this monkey boy? <laughs> Come to T-Mobile and talk whenever, nationwide. Whenever. T-Mobile gives you the most whenever minutes. 1,000 for just $39.99. T-Mobile, get more. Let's take a look at our Illinois Lottery moment. The Illinois Lottery celebrating its 30th anniversary. Colorado closer Sean Chacon helping warm up one of his staff mates before the game today called out on strikes. He was the guy that was a terrific starter last year and at times a number one starter. They convinced him that he would be better suited out of the bullpen for this team but it hasn't worked out for him. So it's Glendon Rush against Helton and he jumps on the first pitch rolls to Aramis Ramirez and Helton is retired and so are the Rockies one pitch ends the seventh comes by four. Ross has got a decision to make. I'll come to New York as long as you don't see Rachel anymore. A decision that will change their lives forever. Next Friends. Tonight at 6 on WGN, Chicago's WB. He's big. <laughs> He's bold. He's Robert Barone. How about you just stay here and maybe blink a few times? And he's only on Everybody Loves Raymond. Weeknights at 6.30 and 10.30 on WGN. This is my car. So beat up. Please help me make over my car. We got your tape. We're going to fix your bucket. <laughs> You ready? Check this out. Ah! That doesn't even look like my car! That's a lot of work, but we fixed your bucket, didn't we, guys? Yeah. It's got a spoiler! Look at the wheels! It's here! I love it! I love it! I have a CD player! 
Toyota Corolla XRS. You won't even recognize it. Okay, let's give it a spin, shall we? Yes, the cheeseburger. Try our variety sack with six different tasty sandwiches, just $4.89. So everybody makes out. White Castle, what you crave. Cubs fans, come early and save big with the Cubs early bird discount. During the first hour, the gates are open. Enjoy 25% off all food and non-alcoholic beverages. For hot dogs, pizza, Pepsi, and more, catch the Cubs early bird discount. Two innings of baseball left in Colorado. Cubs trying to sweep the Rockies. Before we go to the eighth inning, let's step aside and pause for station identification. You're watching Chicago's official summer baseball station, WGN-TV Chicago. A non-roster player, Travis Driscoll, is on for the fourth time for Colorado. And Moises Alou, the first man to greet him. The Cubs did see him in this series. And this year he hasn't been great, but okay out of the pen. I pop shallow right. Larry Walker will chase that one toward the corner. And two pitches retires Moises Alou, who's 0 for 4 today. Here's Sammy Sosa, 0 for 2 with a walk. Driscoll, a well traveled player, began his professional career in 1993 with Watertown. That was a Cleveland affiliate. His pitch to Columbus, Kinston, Canton, Buffalo, over in Japan with Yakult. Then went to the Houston organization, pitched in New Orleans. Then made it to the major leagues for the first time, 2002, with Baltimore, where he went 8 and 8. That's the Yakult Swallows, one of the great teams in Japan. The young man wants Sammy to hit a home run. He held up a sign. And Sammy has always loved to hit in Denver. 21 career home runs in this park. Two balls, no strikes. That one fouled off his body, two and one now. Well, that was similar last night when Sammy got a fastball inside. He did the same thing, only with better results. He brought the hands in in the seventh and hit a three run homer that at the time tied up the game at four. Two balls, one strike. Flying right center field, pretty hard hit. But it's caught by Burnett's two steps shy of the track. Well, Burnett's played him perfectly because normally you don't see teams playing Sammy around toward right center, but in this ballpark and the way Driscoll was going to pitch him, Burnett's was right there. Well, Sammy hits this one awfully hard, and he probably is thinking two bases. But when he looks up and sees Burnett's there, he knows that he's out. Aramis an eight game hitting streak. Started off the seventh inning with a single, and two runs came in, and we're up four nothing. Back to the mound, knocks down Driscoll. He'll recover in time, and he makes the play. Three up, three down in the top of the eighth. It's four nothing. Comes at Coors. Leon, as a novice professional baseball player, who are some other players you admire? Well, Chuck, I think I would have to say, uh, myself. I really like me. Seriously, there must be other players in the league you like. No, Chuck. What about any historic players? Historic players? Look here, man, I ain't really concerned what was happening during the dinosaur age. Leon lives in it right now. And right now? Leon loves Leon. <sighs> it's all good, baby. It was her older sister's bike, but I made sure for her it ran like new. Now it's her first car, and although it's not brand new, I know the same attention went into making it feel like it was. All Quality Check certified pre-owned Fords come with a 115-point inspection completed by Ford trained technicians. Ford Quality certified, the only way to buy a pre-owned vehicle, and only at your local Ford store. So just like that, she's gone from two wheels to four. Attention all taste buds, this is your wake-up call. Introducing Arby's new Market Fresh Chicken Salad. It's a delicious twist on ordinary chicken salad with all white meat chicken, fresh diced apples, grapes, celery, and toasted pecans. 
And now you get to choose how you want it served. As a sandwich, in a wrap, or in a bowl. Whichever way you prefer. Arby's new Market Fresh Chicken Salad. One great chicken salad, three ways to enjoy it. Hey, Mr. Opportunity here. Listen up, folks. Now that is a beautiful Accord LX, and Honda is having a clearance. We're talking serious deals here, people. Honda plus clearance? Come on, you do the math. Seems like a no-brainer to me, but <laughs> I'm just two-dimensional. The 2004 Honda clearance. Hey, you snooze, you're gonna lose. Now you can lease an Accord LX for $1.99 a month for 36 months. And where else? Say it with me, your Honda dealer. I'm Mr. Opportunity, and I'm knocking. London Rush on for his first full inning, perhaps, here in the Colorado 8th. It's 4-0 Cubs. And Vinny Castilla, the man greeting him first. And the count to him, one ball, two strikes. He's already come on for a huge out, retiring Helton on one pitch to get out of the seventh. Popped him up, right side of the diamond, Tom Walker. One man down. We're being escorted by Gary Hughes on this Number round. 33, Larry Watt. Pass along Here. best wishes to the Garden Deli in Sarasota, Florida. He just loves that place. Here's Larry Walker. He takes an inside corner strike. Rush drops down sidearm. This is. Walker today is one for three. That hit an infield hit. Wendon and Rush throwing unbelievably well this year on for the 19th time. 11 of them starts. If you had to pick a pitching MVP, you could do a whole lot worse than this guy. He's done whatever Dusty Baker has wanted him to do. And he just struck out Larry Walker looking. Well, dropping down sidearm to the left-handers has opened up a whole new world for him. This was a guy who struggled last year. We talked to Ned Yost with Milwaukee. He said he hated to see him go. And this year is a starter. Late in the game, middle of the game, innings eater when he doesn't start. He's done everything. Walker can't believe the call. The call will stand. Ground ball up the middle. Nomar gloves, kicks, recovers, and still gets his man. How about that play? His wife is Mia Hamm, an Olympic soccer player. She showed him a thing or two on that play. Inning over. We go to the ninth. Four nothing Cubs. Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Over 2,800 nonstop daily flights to 60 destinations all across the country. Polyunsaturated. P-O. Gingivitis. G. Pungent. P-U-N. G. Hyperventilate. B-I-A-T-I-N-N-T-D. Sweet dreams. S-W. There's an easier way to get to Washington, D.C. Fly Southwest Airlines nonstop for just $79 from Chicago Midway. You are now free to move about the country. Will my car be ready this afternoon like you promised? Yes. Will you try to sell me something I really don't need? No. Come to Midas for great value and service every day. Lifetime guaranteed brake pads or shoes are just $89.95 installed. Guaranteed for as long as you own your car. Trust the Midas touch. Polite society tells us that it's rude to stare. But then along came the 2005 V6 Nissan Altima. With a redesigned interior, a state-of-the-art navigation system and satellite radio, and a sleek, refined exterior. So go ahead, stare. Frankly, it'd be rude not to. WGN Morning News. It's Chicago's news. Chicago's weather, Chicago's traffic, Chicago's news, made fresh daily on WGN Morning News, weekdays from 5 to 9. Closed captioning for Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you by Giordano's, celebrating 30 years of stuffing pizza for Chicago. 
Big day for Derek Lee today. Two more hits, two more runs scored. One of those hits, a big one, a solo home run in the second inning, and that was more than enough for Mark Pryor today. Now at the play, it's short by Nomar. Pretty nice play because he couldn't corral it at first, and after dribbling it up the middle, he still had enough on the throw to make the play at first. One the, ball, two strikes. The defense for the Cubs today, and I mean all around, has been just wonderful. Well, let's take another look at the effort up the middle by Nomar Garcia Parra. Balls hit hard up the middle. Omar goes to his left. Actually, it hits off his shin, and he still has enough to get it across. So a high five for number five as Derek Lee is retired on strikes. Driscoll has faced four men and has retired them all. Comes baseball on WGN, produced by Pete Thomas. Fillmore Ellison is our director. Our associate producer Mark Brady, the executive producer of WGN Sports Bob Forwald. Thanks to our studio coordinator back at WGN, Christina Quinn. Todd Walker on base three more times today. That's a wicked cut, and that's out of play for a strike. Let's give some credit to the Cub offense, too, Steve. They have played very solid, fundamental offensive baseball in this series. Well, we've seen some bunts, we've seen some sacrifice flies, and we've seen some guys going from first to third. Paul Baco today with a big hit. Cubs' magic number is still four. When they put four up on the board, this team plays 750 baseball. They've done that for the better part of a year and two thirds. And today they have the magic number of four. They certainly have made it hold up to this point. This year, scoring four or more, 53 and 10. Those are pretty impressive numbers, and with Corey at the top, along with Garcia Parent in the two spot, and since the acquisition of Nomar, that's been one, two. Alou moved up at three. Sammy Ramirez, Lee, Walker, or Grezelanek, and Barrett or Baco. It's a formidable lineup. Two swinging strikeouts here in the top of the ninth inning. And Baco with a very good day today. Two RBIs in the seventh inning. Hits for the fourth time. And that's in for a strike. We want to send along condolences to the Scala family. Pat Scala, owner of a Chicago institution, Scala's Italian Beef, lost his mom last week. Leah Scala passed away. So Pat, uh, all of us sent along our condolences at this very sad time for you. And that's off the plate. Two balls and a strike to Paul Baco. Driscoll using the Hanson brother glasses, apparently feeling a lot more effective on the hill. Eddie Shore, old time hockey. Line drive, left center field. It is off the glove of Clayton. That'll be a base hit. And Paul's got a couple of them today. And the last one played at a pair. That was the big one. Glendon Rush will have an opportunity to swing the bat, something he does well. Baco hits it off the end of the bat. Clayton, as it hit off his wrist almost. Hard to judge that one, though, was slicing away from it. He should have put on the foil. <laughs> Glendon Rush. Slaps that toward left center field. That ball is going to split the gap. Baco around second. He's on his way to third. Wendell's going to wave him around. Clayton handles the relay. The throw to the plate is off target. Glenn and Rush a double and an RBI. We've seen some pretty good hitting pitchers in this game. And Glendon Rush drives home yet another insurance run. The Cubs have nine hits. Driscoll gets a fastball away, and Glendon Rush, who hit a home run in Wrigley Field to left center field, splits the gap. And no chance to get Paul Baco at the plate. 
So it's five to nothing. Cubs are in front. And Corey Patterson will hit with two away. Way upstairs, ball one. The Cubs on the cusp of their first ever sweep at Coors Field. Out of play, left side evens up the count. You know, when Ron Seno came in earlier, he asked us about the screening today, and we know that Vicky Sano is watching television, so if Vicky could call Ron, tell him we're screening at the bus, we'd be really happy. Thanks, Vic. Talk to you guys later. Well, one one count upstairs, two balls and a strike. Or he could have his French dog call. Well, then obviously he'd need an interpreter in whatever language he would talk to him. I wonder if Ronnie's gotten through his book that I bought him in Milwaukee, How to Speak Dog. That is, that was a good book. A lot of very important information in that book. The problem is leaving it on the next flight well, that's true. doesn't make for a great understanding of the premise of the book. Well, this may come as a surprise to you. Ronnie asked me to go pick up that book for him at the bookstore. Still hasn't gone into the pocket to <laughs> repay. The 3-1 count is in for a strike. At three and two. Nomar waiting to see if Corey can keep it alive. Corey, a former Cubs number one draft choice, by the way, out of the Cubs system. Number three pick in the country out of Georgia. He'll take ball four. Three straight have reached against Driscoll after striking out Lee and Walker. And the Cub fans here in Denver, one more chance Just to cheer no more. No more. Garcia Parra. Last chance for Nomar to keep his hit streak intact. That one almost hit him. No, not the getting hit streak, although he's been hit a number of times at shortstop today. But he spun out of the way of that breaking ball. Five nothing comes leading, looking for a little more here in the ninth. And that one's rolled foul at third. One ball, one strike. Garcia Parra. Got here, he was still using his Boston Red Sox issued bats. Wonder if he's gotten any cub lumber yet. The autograph and the team name under the autograph said Red Sox. One one count. One ball, two strikes. Wind is whipping up. And with it, getting a little tougher to hit the ball out in left field a little easier in right center I don't think we've seen a bad hitting day in this ballpark although the Rockies today would argue with you they've had eight hits and nary a run you don't shut this team out in this ballpark too often all in all just a dominating performance to this point by the Cubs from stem to stern, one ball, two strikes. Now two and two to Garcia Parra. Two on, two out, top nine. Light raindrops beginning to fall. As Nomar bloops that towards second, Miles will give ground. Look at the wind carry that out to shallow right. One run, two hits, two left. Last chance for Colorado, trailing by five. Here's how the blue-collar guys define the word juicy. Do you see these naked pictures of Pamela Anderson? Here's how the critics define the new sketch series, Blue Collar TV, Laugh Out Loud Comedy. What's the number for 911? It's <clears throat> slap your head funny. Why don't you do your dance routine for our new neighbor? <laughs> The new comedy, Blue Collar TV. Tonight at 7 on WGN, Chicago's WB. 
You sure we can get a couple more years out of these machines? Because we really can't afford new ones. Relax. With my little upgrades, nobody will even know the difference. Oh, I love this one. This is spreadsheets, we're processing graphs, and this one's, um... I'm not sure what this one's for. There's a smarter way to make your office more productive. Man, I wish I was getting a Dell. Old technology just holds you back, but new customized Dell systems feature Intel Pentium 4 processors with HT technology, so everyone can do more for less. Right now, get great deals on select Dell desktops. Hurry, save up to 20% off and get free shipping. What's this? It's your new laptop. The latest technology, easy as Dell. Dell systems use Intel Pentium 4 processors with HD technology. Just how big should an SUV be? The Hyundai Santa Fe with America's best warranty. It's big on what matters and small where it counts. A battle of former Brewers heading to the ninth. Burnitz against Rush. 5-0, the Cubs shutting out Colorado here at home. Jeremy Burnitz is happy to see anybody on the mound but Mark Fryer. He faced him three times, and he struck him out three times, although he hasn't had any luck with Glendon Rush. Three swinging strikeouts is about as tough a day as you can have. He protects that time. Unless he goes after the golden sombrero and one more of those sidearm sliders, he probably will be sitting down. And ricochets off Baco. Rockies have been shut out twice this year at Coors Field. Cubs trying to do it to them for the third time. High fly ball, long run, left field line. The wind pushing that, however, into the seats. Reds still lead the Giants 2 1 in the seventh. Dodgers pounding the Pirates behind Jeff Weaver, eight to two. Los Angeles is 21 and five against the Pirates the last four years. You don't want to be trailing late. And Felipe, who rested Barry Bonds, I think maybe he'll rest him another three. Be okay with us. Rush sets and now is ready with a one-two. Again, out of play by Burnitz. Aaron Harang and Kirk Reeder, the starters in San Francisco today. Arizona and the Marlins are underway. There's no score in the second in the desert. Pavano and Cormier. Arizona traded Robbie Alomar to the White Sox earlier today for players to be named later. Good battle continues for Burnett's here. Braves are in Houston tonight. Atlanta beat him 5-4 yesterday. Mike Hampton will face Darren Oliver. Down at Minute Maid Park. And as we told you, Montreal visits St. Louis. Whoa, where was that? Missed the corner, I suppose. Three and two. Little pop, shallow left field, out goes Nomar. He's slowing, two-handed catch. One man down, let's look Steve at today's Budweiser plays of the game. Derek Lee started it off with a monstrous home run to left center field. Corey Patterson taking one deep. And the two home runs gave the Cubs a two-run lead. Paul Bacco with two RBIs, but those two home runs, the Budweiser plays of the game. And if the Cubs do indeed sweep the first time they will ever have having done it in this ballpark against the Rockies. We will head to the charter go to San Francisco. 
with dreams of a 6 and 0 road trip still intact. One ball one strike the count to Todd Green. He pops it up right side Todd Walker. Derek Lee with the wind blowing that ball right into the leather of Walker two outs. One out to go and Mark Pryor will win the ball game. Lendon Rush will get a save for this effort. He came in with the tying run in the on deck circle. The Cup fans delirious here in Denver. So are we. They got the brooms out. First time they've ever done it in this ballpark for the Cubs. Kit Pello, the final Colorado hope. Rockies will welcome the Reds to town starting tomorrow. Well, if this one ends up the way we hope, the Cubs will have a game and a half lead in the wild card. And they'll creep a half game closer to St. Louis. It'll be a four game win streak. Cubs undefeated with Nomar Garcia Parra. One ball, one strike. The count to Kit Pello. Two and one. The pitching matchups Clement against a man yet named for the Giants tomorrow. Maddox and Schmidt Saturday. Wood and Noah Lowry on Sunday. We're going to take a look at Noah Lowry and he's a highly acclaimed prospect for the Giants. That Saturday matchup a great one as Maddox goes for 300 against a guy that's just been dominating for the better part of two years. All start there for Rush. Two balls, two strikes, base is empty. Line drive right field. That's slicing into the corner, and it's a fair ball. Sammy will dig it out. Pello on his way to second. It gets past Sosa. And Pello's going to make third. Sammy drops it again. Sandy Alomar's going to wave Pello around. And the Rockies are going to get a run in the ninth. Well, I would assume it's a double, and there has to be an error in there somewhere. As that ball went skidding around. Sammy missed it the first time and the second time. And that's one happy Pello. Probably not going to affect the final outcome. I don't think they would give him an inside the park home run, but if they do, it probably will be the first. There's one drop. There's two drops. And in the raindrops, Colorado's on the board. It's a five to one game. And there is an error charged on the play. Be the second error on the year for Sosa. A white flag with the blue W. One out away. Does Pella get a double or a triple? I believe he's going to get a double. Don't know for sure, but if he misses the league lead in triples, he'll be unhappy. That's going to be history. Todd Walker puts the squeeze on it, and the Cubs sweep the Colorado Rockies. Final score, Cubs 5, Rockies 1. This was a great game, Stoney. Every facet of the attack until the misplay in the ninth inning. The Cubs head to San Francisco awfully excited. This is a hot baseball team with a revamped lineup. The pitching was terrific. Pryor will get the win and rush the save. They played an exceptional defensive game and oh that offense as the Cubs will go bumping out of town and on to San Francisco. There's your final. We'll talk about it when we come right back. It was a relationship that wasn't supposed to last, but no one knew it would blossom into a love affair that has become a timeless classic. This summer, relive America's favorite love story, Ford Taurus. And during the one big event, Ford authorized clearance. Choose 0% financing for 60 months or 4,000 cash back, plus 1,000 clearance cash. Ford Taurus, America's love affair continues. Now playing for a limited time. Sammy Sosa. Hook my friend Sammy Sosa up with one of those special tacos.
Hey! Tacos and Pepsi. The perfect double play. <laughs> it's the cola. There's your final score. Cubs sweep the Rockies 5-1 the final. Steve Mark Pryor was just terrific. He's now 3-2. Cubs beat Jason Jennings now 10-9 on the year. It's a four-game win streak, and the Cubs head to San Francisco still with a perfect road trip intact. And really in this series, you saw just about the entire Cub arsenal. This is a team coming together. They're coming together at the right time. They're taking on a very tough giant team. Barry Bonds will be playing in that series, but the Cubs, 3-0 on the road trip, a big sweep. And can't wait to see it tomorrow night from SBC Park. And if that's the case, we've got real big problems. 5-1 <laughs> is the score. Come sweep the Rockies. Hope you enjoyed our telecast. For the man who would be President Steve Stone and our entire crew, Chip Carey from Coors Field. We'll see you.